Welcome to the Tools for Traders uh, training session. Tonight will be the Snapback and PDPI, and this is being recorded on January 22nd, 2024. Take it, Ripper. Okay. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Tonight, uh, we're going to do something a little different. We've been talking about the chart tool in all of our prior sessions. So tonight we're gonna to talk about something that's hopefully a little simpler. Uh, we're gonna talk about the snapback indicator and the PDPI indicator. Now, many of you who have been using the tools, you've probably seen the snapback indicator already. We've had it in the tools for several years now. Uh, this indicator is based on the concept of reversion to the mean. That's the same thing that is in Bollinger Bands, for instance, um, and is used in a lot of uh, other techniques for trading channels and other stuff. But the way we do it is a bit different than the way uh, it's done in Bollinger Bands uh, or in other uh, indicators and mechanisms that are out there. What we actually do is we measure the distance from a reference point on each candle to our proxy for the mean. So we're using an exponential moving average to represent the mean. And we have a specific point on the candle that we use to represent the candle and we measure the distance from that point to our exponential moving average. And then we take these measurements and we put them into a statistical context. And the idea is basically, we want to determine where price likes to be relative to the mean. So we create statistically a comfort zone around the mean where price likes to be. And when price starts leaving this comfort zone, it eventually is going to reach a point where it's either going to stall and let price catch up to it, thereby reducing the distance between price and the mean, or it's going to snap back where it's actually going to reverse and actively move back towards the current value of the mean. So when that happens, Essentially, we're getting reversion to the mean. Now, the output from the snapback is a histogram. And because of the way that we do this, uh, we can show a bit more information than you can get from you know, Bollinger Bands or other things. So we show you the actual distance from price to the mean. And that's the height of the bars in the histogram. Then we use the color of the bars to indicate whether or the significance of that distance. So if your distance is within the comfort zone, the normal range that distance likes to be from the mean, the bars are going to be green to indicate that everything is normal. When price starts getting further away from the mean than normal, then the bars start to change color. So when the distance from price to the mean is more than one standard deviation away from its normal value, that's when you start seeing the bars change color. And that's when the bars will change to yellow. And that indicates that there is a probability that price could stall or snap back. As the distance between price and the mean grows, and it becomes more than two standard deviations away from the normal distance, then the bars turn red. And the probability of price stalling or snapping back towards the mean is now significant. And if price actually succeeds in getting more than three standard deviations uh, away from the mean or from its normal distance from the mean, 
this is a condition that's rarely seen. And now the probability of price stalling or snapping back is extremely high. So this is the basic idea behind the snapback indicator. Now the snapback indicator has a couple modes of operation. Here we have unidirectional mode. And in this mode, the bars are showing you the distance from the mean, and that's the scale on the right. You can see in this case here, uh, this was actually taken on the micro ES. And so when this was uh, taken, price had gotten over eight points away from the mean. You can also see here the color progression, uh, which is one of the reasons why this particular example was chosen. You can see how on the left side and on the right side of the histogram, the bars are green. So price was within its normal range from the mean at the beginning of this. And then something happened and price took off and got uh, gradually further and further away from the mean. And we can see how the bars turned yellow and then turned red and eventually turned magenta. And then the snapback started. And as price began moving back towards the mean, we can see that the bars went down again, showing that the distance between price and the mean was decreasing. So this is unidirectional mode. Now there is another mode called bidirectional mode. And in this mode, the height of the bars and the colors of the bars are exactly, they have the same meaning as they did in unidirectional mode. Uh, but we've added one piece of information here. And that is that the bars now point in the direction that price would go if a snapback takes place. So if the bars are above zero and a snapback occurs, that means that price is going to go up. If the bar is below zero, that means that price is going to go down if a snapback occurs. So this takes a little getting used to when you're looking at it. But the thing here is that I, uh, once you get used to it, a quick glance at it will tell you which way reversion of the mean wants to push price. And again, the height of the bars gives you an idea of how much pressure there is for price to revert to the mean. Now, you can go and add a signal line. And the signal line is basically generated by taking a moving average of the height of the bars on the histogram. And you can tune this for whatever particular market you're looking at on whatever interval it is. And basically the idea is that, you know, when the bars get above the signal line, it's time to take notice the probability of uh, a snapback or a stall is increasing and becoming significant. And this can be used in addition to the color of the bars. Because there are times when you could have uh, green bars above the signal line. That does happen occasionally. Now, when you're using the signal line in bi-directional mode, the signal line is reflected so that it shows up on both sides of 
zero line. So it forms, I guess you could call it an envelope. But you would use it in the same way. You know, again, you'd be looking for where price crosses the signal line and is outside of the signal line because that, again, the signal line represents the average height of the bars over the last X number of candles. And all of a sudden you're getting bars that are more than that. So that's showing a sudden increase in the distance away from the mean that price is. And so that increases, again, the probability of a stall or a snapback happening. Now, there's another mode that you can use also. You can also set a warn if above line and a warn if below line. Now, this is normally used in conjunction with another feature, which we use to adjust for changes in volatility. And basically that feature takes all measurements as a multiple of the ATR. And the ATR changes in response to changes in volatility. So this can give you a significantly different picture. And again, it, it adjusts the values from the snapback based on volatility. And then putting the horizontal lines on here make a lot more sense. So for instance, the default is to have a line at two and another one at negative two. These values came from back testing and specifically the back testing was done on NQ. But when we've looked at this on other markets, it seems to work there as well. Although we haven't, you know, done a lot of testing on other markets. Uh, but again, the, the few times we have gone other markets, surprisingly, it, it still worked rather well. But be aware, you may have to adjust, you know, the worn uh, above and below lines for whatever market you're actually using. But basically what this is saying is that when price goes above 2 ATR away from the mean, the probability of getting a snapback or a stall goes up regardless of the color of the bar. And again, since this is in bi-directional mode, uh, you reflect everything you know, below zero as well. And so that's why we have negative two. Uh, so if you know, the, the bars go below negative two, Essentially, that's saying that, you know, price is more than two ATR away from the mean. And based on the back test results, when we see that, the odds of getting a snapback or a stall are going up. So let's look at some of the settings involved in this. So the first group of settings we have here, and, and this is affecting how we take our measurements. So the first setting there essentially is our proxy for the mean, it, it's telling the exponential moving average, you know, how many items to average. And so we're using a, a period of 20 by default. The methodology is selecting the reference point that we're going to use when we measure the distance from the candle to the mean. And there's several different ones available, but this, this is something that, again, we don't recommend changing. 
Uh, but those are all listed in the manual if, if you really want to get down and, and play with how you know the indicator works. The next couple of settings, again, this is where we tell the snapback indicator to keep all its distances in terms of the ATR. And again, this is an attempt to adjust for changes in volatility that occur throughout the day and from day to day, and also from market to market. Uh, and if we're going to be adjusting, you know, using the ATR, we have to know what length ATR to use. So these two settings control that, uh, I guess we'll call it the volatility adjustment. Now, the next setting controls the number of candles that we look back and we use for normalization. So there we're gonna look at the distance from the mean on each of those candles. And we're going to try to use that to determine what the normal range of values is uh, for the distance from the mean. And this is how we can go and develop that comfort zone around the mean where price likes to stay. So this controls the number of candles that we're using when we go to determine the comfort zone around the mean. The next group of settings covers the signal line, whether or not you want it. We already said it's a moving average. Uh, so this lets you set the length of the moving average and you can also set the color of the signal line. We've talked about the unidirectional mode and the bidirectional mode. And so here, the switch unidirectional, true or false, this tells the system which mode to use. Uh, the default is actually true, which is unidirectional. You set it to false, it'll be bidirectional. And bidirectional seems to be the more popular mode at the moment. For the warn and above, uh, the warn above line and the warn below line, we have you know, a group of equivalent settings for each that basically allow you to turn them on and off and then define you know, what value to use. And again, using these makes the most sense when you are using the ATR uh, and keeping your, your distances as a ratio with the ATR. Now the next block of, of settings here, these basically control when the bar colors change. And we call them alert levels because they're changing the bar color in an, attention, uh, in an attempt to get your attention and alert you to something that's taking place. And by default, the first alert level is set to trigger when the distance to the mean is one standard deviation beyond the normal range uh, for the distance to the mean. And the color is set to change to yellow. The next alert level takes place at two standard deviations. At this, pro at this point, you're quite a ways from you know, the mean. The third level is at three standard deviations. Now, again, based on back testing and based on whatever market that you are, you know, trading, you can go and adjust those values to that particular market based on what you actually observe and what you actually encounter. Now, the last setting is the alert level. 
If that's set to zero, you won't get any alerts generated. Then if it's set to a value greater than zero, like let's say uh, two as an example, it will generate an alert if your alert level is two or greater. So that means basically if your if the snapback is showing red or magenta bars, you set the alert level to one, then you're gonna get alerts whenever you have a yellow, a red, or a magenta bar. If you set it to three, that's the highest alert level, you'll only get alerts when the snapback indicator is printing magenta bars. So that's, I guess you could say the minimum alert level for it to actually create a trade station alert that will show up on the screen. It, it puts it into the, uh, the standard trade station alert system. So you should be able to get it sent to you as an email also. Now, uh, let, let's talk about how do you use this? Well, the snapback indicator is not a timing tool. While it can give you warning in advance that there's likely to be a change in price action. Again, the, these are statistical alerts, so they're not gonna be precise enough for you to attempt to use them as a timing mechanism. So how do you go about using them? Well, the main way is to use them as uh, an odds enhancer. So if the snapback indicator has uh, the current bars are red or magenta, you know that there's a significant probability of price stalling or snapping back towards the mean. So if you're looking to go long and the snapback indicator is saying that if a snapback occurs and price is going to go down when the snapback occurs and it's showing red or magenta bars, you may want to reconsider going long at that point in time. Because if you don't, you could end up hitting a reversal fairly quickly or price could stall on you. But if you hit the reversal, that means you could end up taking some heat. And then it's a matter of, is it merely a pullback or is it a true reversal? And uh, price is now gonna run for a significant difference, uh, excuse me, a significant distance in the new direction, in which case you get stopped out. So, you know, a lot of us, if we're looking to get into a trade and the snapback is showing us, you know, red or magenta bars or the height of the bars is beyond, you know, two or negative two when we have the snapback keeping everything as multiple of, of the ATR, uh, we're not going to get into the trade. You know, we're, we're going to wait for a possible better entry point or a reversal. So that's one way that, that you could do it. Another possibility is you're looking to play a reversal. And so you are actively expecting price to change direction at a certain point. And if price is approaching that point and you're seeing a lot of snapback pressure building up, and the snapback is saying that, yeah, if you get reversion to the mean here, it's going to go your way, then that acts as an odds enhancer. Now, you don't want to use that as your primary case for, for building a trade around. You know, you want to have 
some other reason as the the primary factor for why you're looking to take uh, a trade there based on a reversal. But if you have the snapback in addition to that primary reason, that's a significant odds enhancer. Now, if you're already in a trade and price has been moving in your direction for a while and you start to see the snapback indicator showing you know, the red or magenta candle um, or bars, then you know there's pressure building up to revert to the mean. What we don't know is if we're going to get a stall or if we're going to get a snapback, you know, or merely merely a pullback or a complete reversal. So we want to look at other factors at that point to give us a better idea of what price might do. And if price actually comes up and we get a stall, that usually means that we're going to get another leg in whatever direction price was moving. And again, if we look at our other factors to determine how strong our move currently is, I mean, let's say if we're, we're moving with the trend and the trend is strong, then this may well be a point where we can add on to our trade. So you got to look at the context. The snapback is warning you that we could have a change in price behavior. And so we can start thinking about that ahead of time. So when it happens, we know what we want to do. If we get the stall and we're going with the trend and the trend is strong, we may want to add on. If we think the trend has, is weak and this could be the end of it, we may want to tighten up our stop. You know, so if we get the snap back. And we think it's going to be a reversal and not just a, a simple pullback. So that's the way a lot of us use the snapback indicator. And I'm sure there's a lot of other ways uh, as well. But these are some tips to help you get started with it. Any questions on the snapback at this point? Okay. Question. Is it, yeah. is it possible we could have a setting where the movement of the market is the same as the movement of, of snapback? And then when it snaps back, the movement of the snapback is in the same direction as it's more like natural. You know, when you're flying an airplane, the altimeter will, I think, will be rising when you're climbing up and then going the other way. So a natural way of reading it, just an option. So you're talking about in uh, bi-directional mode, you're talking about flipping? Yes. Maybe That's... more divided by minus one. That way they, they flip around. That's a possibility. That's a possibility. I don't think that would be that difficult to add. So I'll take a look at that. And then we'll see. Because the, the way it was set up was based on, on uh, the feedback that uh, we had gotten at the time. And we had more people who liked it this way 
you know, than the other way, because I originally did it the other way. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, we could make a switch uh, that would let you go either way, I believe. Yes. I'll go back in and I'll look at that and we'll see if we can get that added. Okay, any other questions or comments? All right, then let's talk about the PDPI. The PDPI is the Price Direction Pressure Index. And this indicator is focused on price movement within candles and between candles. Now, since price only moves when you have an imbalance between supply and demand, this indicator interprets price movement as pressure to move in a particular direction. So the indicator tracks the upward and downward movement, again, within the candles and from one candle to the next independently. And it also tracks the difference between the two. So we call that the composite. Now, the upward and downward movement, as well as the composite, are put into context using a statistical analysis. So we're going to do something similar to what we do at the snapback, where we're going to go and look back in time over, I believe the default is 100 candles also. So we're going to look at what values we got for upward and downward pressure and for the composite over the last 100 candles. And then we're going to do some statistics and we're going to take the current values and based on the statistics, we're going to convert them into an index. And the index is set up so it's only going to go from zero to 100. And the 50 line is the bull bear line. If you're above the 50 line, you're in bullish territory, you have more pressure to go up than you do to go down. And if you're below the 50, then you have more pressure to go down than to go up. So that's the concept. Here's the default mode. And the default mode is to display the composite value, which is derived from the difference between the upward and downward pressure values. And again, since this is an index, the possible range of values is from 0 to 100. And so you can see uh, our scale on the right. You're never going to see that go above 100 or below 0. You can see the 50 line, which we just talked about, as being our bull bear line. And by default, if the composite is above 50, he's going to try to color it green. If it's below 50, he's going to try to color it red. Now, the way TradeStation actually covers these, uh, these are all line segments. So it depends on where the line segment starts as to what the color is. You know, so here we have a red, uh, let me get the cursor going here, so you guys can see that. Let's make it visible. Oh boy, that's tiny over Zoom. Uh, well, you can see here we've got uh, part of a red line that's above 50, and that's because that the start of that line segment was below 50. And so TradeStation uses whatever the start was uh, for the color of the line. But generally speaking, uh, again, the lines will be colored. If it's above 50, it'll be green. If it's below 50, it'll be red. 
and it's using the darker green color and the darker red color. And there's a reason for that you'll see later. Now there's also a high line drawn here at 65 and there's a low line drawn at 35. The 65 line, based on what we've seen in, in back testing, if the, if the PDPI gets above 65, you've got some very significant upward pressure. And if it goes below 35, you've got very significant downward pressure. And usually uh, price is moving very quickly, upwards or downwards, uh, when you see these extreme values getting hit. And so those are put on the chart for reference. And again, you have the ability to move those and, and set those you know, to where you would like them to be. So if you're on a, um, a different market, you could optimize uh, for that market back test and perhaps set those to, to different values. But those are general values which seem to work well over a significant range of markets. Now, this isn't the only mode that you can use with the PDPI. Here's another mode that you can use where he's actually displaying the upper pressure and the downward pressure independently. So the upper pressure is going to be the light green line and the downward pressure is going to be the light red line. And in this particular mode, those values are being displayed as indexes also. So they'll range from zero to 100 at most. And the 50 line is still the bull bear line, basically speaking. Uh, but it acts as a, as a reference as well. And so you look at these and you can look at you know price behavior and when you see price change direction, this can help answer some questions, such as price change direction, we know that there had to be an imbalance between supplier demand. So for example, let's say that price was moving up. And now all of a sudden price is moving down. So there was a change in direction. Why is price moving down? Was it because there was an overwhelming amount of supply that suddenly came into play and demand has remained you know, fairly steady, but is just being totally overwhelmed by supply? Or is it because demand has fallen off and there may not be a lot of supply in play, but demand has dropped off so much that that supply now dominates? That may be some things you can see using this mode here. I mean, at the left side of the chart, we can see where uh, supply has dropped off significantly at the same time that demand has risen. And then after that, we can see how, how uh, supply starts to pick up again and how demand starts to fall off. So, this mode can answer some questions uh, whether or not your trading system cares about those questions is another matter, of course. But this is available to you. And uh, a third mode you can use here is this one here where we have the composite as well as the upward and downward pressures being displayed. And the interesting thing about this uh, is again, the composite is based off of the difference between the two. And so now you can actually see the difference between the upward and the downward pressure. And the composite gives you an idea of the significance of that difference and how often we've seen that in the past. So on the left side of the chart, we have a significant difference between the 
uh, the upward pressure and the downward pressure. Although when you look at the indexes, you know, you're talking, you know, it's, it's maybe a 10 point difference uh, when it really gets near its widest. But the composite's telling us that that 10 point difference is very significant because we can see the composite is all the way up over 70. So again, depending upon what you're after and what you want to know, you might be able to find that out from the PDPI and what it's seeing you know, in the price movement within the candles and between the candles. So let's talk a bit about the settings. This first group of settings, the first couple of settings basically control the measurement of the upward end downward pressure. When you look at the upward and downward pressure, and we do use some moving averages on that to try to smooth it because it can be, uh, it can bounce around a lot. And that makes it difficult to work with. So we have to smooth it out some in order to get something that we can really work with. So that's what the first two settings are. The first uh, is the moving average type. Trade station supports three, three uh, basic moving averages. One is gonna be the exponential moving average, which is, is what we're gonna do. I believe two is the weighted and three is the uh, simple moving average. Now, after that, we have the normalization process where we evaluate statistically the current price movement in regards to what we have seen before. And we put it into that context. Again, this is something that you probably don't want to mess with, but Basically, we're looking back over the last 100 candles and we're doing some statistics to find out what is the, uh, the normal range for the PDPI values that we've seen or, or actually the upward and downward pressure values and the composite. And based on that, we're going to take the current value and turn it into an index. Now, the last two settings on this page, just as we saw with the snapback, and tell the indicator to adjust for changes in volatility. And the way we do that is by bringing in the ATR. The ATR is the average amount of price movement from candle to candle. And when you have a change in volatility, the ATR is going to change. And so when you tell the tool to adjust for volatility, he's going to start bringing in the ATR. Now, if he brings in the ATR, he needs to know what length ATR to use. And so the default is 14, which is the normal. But you can change that to, again, you know, whatever you would like. But again, in most cases, you know, these are settings you probably won't have to touch. Now, this next block of settings controls showing the, the PDPI composite value. If you want to see it, you can set it to true. There's a small amount of smoothing applied to it. Because again, it can bounce around 
quite a bit, depending upon how volatile the market is and what's happening uh, at that point in time. And if you want more smoothing, you can increase it. If you want less, you can you know go down. Uh, the default is to show the composite value as an index. Again, put it into that statistical context and convert it to a value from 0 to 100. But if you want to see the raw values, you can do that too. We don't recommend that because it's a lot harder to interpret the raw value uh, than with the index. Because when you're showing the raw value, there is no you know, bull bear line or, or references like that. Uh, that all has to be calculated from the statistics. So if you're not doing the statistics, you're just seeing the raw numbers, it can be more difficult to accurately determine what's going on. So that's why we recommend leaving it as an index. But you do have the capability to show it as a raw value. And of course, you've got you know the colors for the for the line or the lines to use. Uh, you've got your controls for when the PDPI line is above 50. That's where we want to show it dark green. When it's below, dark red. Uh, you have your colors for the median line and the thickness and the transparency and all the usual stuff you know that you expect to be able to set with uh, when you're putting a line on the chart. And then after that, we have alerts that you can set. So if you want to be alerted when the PDPI crosses above the median, you can set the bullish alert to true. If you want an alert when the PDPI crosses the median going down, you can set the bearish alert to true. Now, we showed you the, the high line and the low line. The default for the high line is 65. The default for the low line is 35. These are all your controls, the standard stuff for putting a line on the screen. You know, so you can set the thickness, the transparency, the color, the value for the line, all the usual uh, items that you, that you would expect with all of our other tools. And of course, you have the ability to turn the line on and off. If you want to get alerts when price is crossing the high line, you do have the ability to get an alert when price crosses from below to above the line or from above the line to below the line. So in the case of the high line, we have the settings here. Enable high PDPI signal line up X alert or up crossing alert is what that is. And that's that will give you an alert for when the PDPI composite goes from below the signal line to above it. If you want an alert when it goes from above the signal line to below, that would be the, the next alert. And you just sit set which one you want to true. And we're going to have all the same kinds of controls for the low signal line as well. All the usual suspects for setting the color and the line type and the value and the transparency, they're all there. And of course, since we have alerts on the high line, you'll have equivalent alerts on the low line. Now, the last group of settings we're going to look at, these are for when you display the upward pressure and the downward pressure. So the first setting here, 
Uh, this is normally false. This is obviously true at the time I took the snapshot. Um, so you can guess which slide I was working on at the time. <laughs> but uh, again, this, this first setting determines whether or not the upward pressure is going to be displayed. You have a, an equivalent for the downward pressure as well. Again, because it can be quite jumpy at times, uh, you do have the ability to apply some smoothing to it. There is a little bit of smoothing being applied. You can set the color. And then you can tell the tool whether you want to display the raw data or the index value. And again, we recommend using the index value because that's a lot easier to interpret. You've got your median line that's been calculated. Uh, and again, it's, it's been turned into a value from zero to 100. So it's on a, uh, a normalized scale that you can use for comparison purposes. And it, it's, I mean, if you don't do that, then you really need to know a lot about the market you're trading uh, to really understand what that means. So again, we recommend showing it as, as an index. So these are the last of the settings for the PDPI. Does anybody have any questions about it? Hopefully I explained things well enough and it made sense. So next, let's go and play. We'll go into TradeStation. There we go. Get rid of that. Okay, so here we've got a chart. I don't think there's anything on this right now. Uh, no, there's not. All right, so perfect for playing. So we'll start out, we'll add the snapback. Boy, I got so much stuff on this machine. Okay, we'll start out with the default settings. So the default, as you can see, is to come up in unidirectional mode. And so regardless of what direction uh, this is moving in, the bars on the histogram are, again, going to be going up to tell us how far we are away from the meat. We actually did get a red bar down here, interestingly. And that was right when price bottomed out here. And you can see when price started going the other way, we started getting yellow bars here, telling us that a snapback is possible. And in this case, he did indeed roll over and come down a bit. But this, should work on uh, tick charts as well as share bar charts and time-based charts. It really doesn't care. To the indicator, a chart is just a stream of candle data. And the indicator really doesn't care what kind of a chart it is as long as he's getting uh, a reasonable stream of, of candle data to work with.
might mention that uh, range bars and Renko will not work with the snapback because all your bars are the same length and they move right. the same rate. Yeah, in that, in that kind of a case, the way the bars are moving, you're not going to uh, to really be able to measure much <laughs> in terms of uh, your reversion to the mean. So, but on most normal type charts or whatever, this should this should work. If you get off into specialty specialty charts like Renko and stuff like that, or range bar charts and whatnot, you're kind of off. On your own there <laughs> that's not an area that's been uh that's been back tested that's uh not something that this was designed really to work with you know but again here we see some examples let's clean this up a little bit so it shows up better over zoom Okay, that should look a bit better over Zoom. And again, we can go look at more conventional intervals. We can look at a 15 minute chart here. I'm not sure how much data he just loaded, but you can see here, let's see. Okay, so that lines up with that low. We did get the bounce there. We did uh, get an overall change in direction. Here we can see the price, uh, excuse me, the pressure building up. Never gets to red. We do get a pullback here. Then it starts building up again. It's time to get a bigger pullback. So you can see this can be quite sensitive at times. And this is why we say that this is not really a timing tool. It gives you a warning that something's going to happen, but you need to go and look at the context and see what other factors are in play on the chart to get a better idea of whether or not something's going to happen or whether or not it's going to be uh, significant. Now let's go look at the bi-directional mode. So let me grab a bar here so we can go directly into the settings. And we'll turn off the unidirectional mode. And let's see what that looks like. Okay. So here in this mode, you can see which way reversion to the mean is going to push on price to go. You know, we can see here price was uh, coming down hard. Pressure was building up to push price up. And then as price moved up, the pressure went down. Again, over here, price was coming down. We saw pressure build up. Price kind of stalled to burn off some of that pressure. Got a little upward movement before the downward move resumed. So again, this, this is why the snapback can give you warning that something is going to happen, but you need to look at the context to get an idea of whether it's going to be significant or not. 
And again, if you're in a trade, then you have to, to look at what's happening, consider the possibilities, and what point you may want to get out or whether you want to sit there and ride it in because it looks like you're going to get another another leg. Now, to add a signal line to this, we can go and do that. Let's see, show signal line. I'll set that to true. And the default is to use a 21 period moving average. I don't know if that's appropriate for this particular market or not, but uh, what are we on? Run MNQ. So this is the effect I was talking about earlier where you get kind of an envelope forming here because we're essentially mirroring the signal line above and below the 50. But again, you can adjust uh, the signal line and the idea is you want to get it set up so that when price is outside the signal line, that's when you're getting uh, a chance for a snapback or a stall to occur. And you can see that a little bit here. I mean, here we got the green bars, they pop up above the signal line and we do indeed get, you know, the move up here to go with it. And then over in here, when nothing's happening, he just kind of settles in inside the uh, the envelope. So again, this is something that needs to be tuned to the market. But if you have the time and you do the back testing, you could set that up and that could be quite useful. Now, the other thing we saw earlier, uh, it's actually faster if we just grab a bar and go in. There we go. Instead of using the signal line, we can go in and keep everything as a multiple of the ATR. And then we can use the warn if above line and warn if below line. So I'm going to tell him to show the warn if above line and the warn if below line. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that looks quite a bit different. When adjusted for volatility, the magenta bars here went away. However, you can still see we're above the two ATR line here. So price was more than two ATR from the mean at this point. Uh, we can see here, you got more than two ATR from the mean here, and we got a stall. Over here, we actually got the reversal. You know, over here again, he's over the two ATR. And what happened? We've got a little reaction here. And then we got the bigger reaction over here. Or he just kind of bounced around sideways a bit, a bit of a wide range. Let's see if we can see something interesting. See again here, we can see he goes above the two line. And that gives us some warning that something's going to happen, and then boom, it happens. And this ends up just being a, a bit of a pullback before 
price wanders a bit farther. But you can see there was a major change in how quickly he was moving down here from before. And then over here, we're above the two line again. Sideways movement, we got a price stall. Then he plunges down. Our bars are above the two line here. And we actually end up getting reversal out of that. And going the other way, we start getting warnings about a reversal again. We can see it building up here. Are we going from green to yellow? And then the yellow actually breaks the minus two line. And what happens? We get the reversal. So these are some of the ways that you can set up the snapback and you can use the snapback. For those who are playing with the nibble system, uh, this is the setup we use for the snapback there. So any questions on the snapback? All right, let's go look at the PDPI. Uh, let's make sure he puts them in a separate subgraph. Okay, good, it's gonna be subgraph three. Uh, we'll start out with the defaults, and we'll see what that looks like. All right. So this is the, the default mode. We're seeing the composite. And again, the composite is the difference between the upward and downward uh, pressure. And so you can see, you know, over here, it's hugging the 50 line, for instance. And when we look up at the chart of price, price isn't really doing a whole lot here. It's, it's kind of just drifting along as a slight downward bias to it. Uh, which we actually see on the PDPI since it spends a little bit more time below 50 than above. Now, one of the things we, we often look for with the PDPI is divergence. And on tick charts and share bar charts, this actually shows up a lot better uh, on the PDPI than on other indicators such as the RSI. But on time-based charts here, you can see how it's reflecting what's going on, you know, with the way price is moving. And when price is, is drifting along, the PDPI is hugging around 50. And then when price starts to build up steam to go somewhere, so we can see how the PDPI uh, moves accordingly. Now, again, if we look at this on tick charts or on the share bar charts, tick. you'll end up getting divergences. 
and the uh, divergences is, is, is often what we look for. I mean, right here, if we look here, we have price is moving down. Let's uh, just to highlight this here. You know, you got price going down here. And yet, you know, we have price going up here. So the divergences uh, are one of the main things we look for. And they foreshadow what's to come. And so the PDPI usually peaks before price does. Sometimes it's not a lot. Sometimes it happens quite a bit earlier. And on the tick, uh, tick charts and the share bar charts, you see this a lot more than you do on the time-based charts. You know, if we look here, PDPI is bottomed out and is really taking off here to the upside before price actually starts moving. You know, here's a case here where price continued moving up the whole time. We can see the PDPI was moving down, showing that enthusiasm for the upward move was waning. And then eventually it rolls over and goes down. So that's one way that you can use the PDPI. Now, if we change the mode on the PDPI, we might be able to see something else. So we'll come in here, we'll turn off showing the composite. And we'll scroll down towards the bottom here and we'll show the upward and downward pressure. And we're gonna show those both as indexes. You know, so here we can see price was moving up. We could see initially downward pressure was dropping and actually dropped at a faster rate than upward pressure was rising. And then the upward pressure began to gradually taper off while the downward pressure slowly began to build. And then all of a sudden, the downward pressure shot up and dominated, and we saw the, the upward pressure fall. Now, this can be, uh, this particular mode can be more difficult to interpret than just the composite mode. And uh, for those of you playing with the Nibble system, uh, we actually use the composite mode. Although we do have some folks who are playing with this mode as well to see if there are uh, any insights that we can potentially gain from that. But the third mode that we can play with, of course, is we can add the composite to this as well. And adding the composite will give us an idea of how significant the difference is between the upper pressure and the downward pressure are in context of what's been observed over the last 100 candles or so. Let's do it this way. Yeah, there we go.
Now again, the darker green and the darker red are the composite. The lighter green is the upward pressure and the lighter red is the downward pressure. And so again, the, the composite line helps us get an idea of the significance of a particular gap between the upward and the downward pressure. Like uh, this gap over here, hopefully you can see my cursor. Uh, let's do it here. At this point in time, that gap was pretty significant because we can see it drove the composite up above 65, which is a uh, indication of a significant upward pressure at that point. But then the pressure drops off and we can see how it, both the upward and downward pressure just kind of goes sideways around the 50. And price just kind of drifts sideways. So this can potentially give us some insight as to what's going on under the covers with, with price. And you can also look at this with the snapback and see some things as well. I mean, here, the snapback wants to push up. It wants to send price up. And we can actually see that the pressure changes here. The downward pressure drops, the upper pressure goes up, and we get the reversal that the snapback was saying was possible at this point. Because we had the yellow bars, the yellow bars tells us that a snapback is possible. Now, normally we would see the bars go above, you know, the the two line in this in this case, but uh, that didn't didn't happen. But we did have the yellow bars giving us some degree of warning here. But you can match up what's going on with the snapback, and you can see that reflected in the upward or downward pressure curves here uh, in the PDPI quite often. Now, this mode here, it can be difficult to find divergences at times because it's a very busy mode, so to speak. Uh, if you're looking for divergences, often showing just the composite makes it easier to find. Uh, the divergences that we look for. But if you got a good eye, you can still see them. And some, and some of them are pretty blatant, like, you know, the big one right here. You know, you've got price moving up here. You know, and very clearly while price is going up, we've got the composite moving down. So then it's just a matter of when is the upward move gonna run out of gas and roll over. So those are the three major modes on the PDPI. Does anybody have any questions about that? Does that seem easy enough to access or use? Should you want to do so? Great explanation, thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there any other comments or questions about the snapback or the PDPI? All right, then, I think we can end this recording.